Hi guys, I'm Peter. Welcome back to Shapeless new tutorial series in which I show you how I sculpt a dragon. In the previous video I talked about reference images and how to do the block out of the basic shapes of the body. In today's episode I will deal with the anatomy, I will talk about the muscles and how to improve the model gradually and what needs to be worked out. Don't worry, you don't need to know the name of every muscle as I won't mention them much, but it's enough if you roughly know where the origins and the insertions of the muscles are. In the previous section I already mentioned how important reference images are. They are essential if you want to make a lifelike model of an existing living creature, but they are also useful for imaginary creatures, as usually these are a mix of existing ones. For example, what I'm doing now is like a cross between a reptile and a bat. This was already mentioned in the previous part, but in this video it is much more emphasized. Since I'm making a fantasy creature, it's enough if the anatomy is believable and you don't have to cling tooth and nails to the anatomy. For example, the wings will be much more muscular than the wings of a bat, and the body will be much more graceful than that of a Komodo dragon. I will now sculpt the body parts so that you can follow along in the video. My advice here is not to be focused on one detail only. For example, don't get stuck on the eyes and make them super realistic while barely working out the rest of the model. Try to develop each part with equal detail and gradually develop the model. This is useful because if one part is already done and very detailed but after a few hours you realize that there is a problem with it, it will be much more difficult to correct. You might also be more cautious about making big changes, because you are happy with the details you have created, but in case something turns out to be wrong, feel free to fix it, don't be afraid that you won't be able to do it again, because you already done it once. Ok, now that we've cleared that up, we can start sculpting. Let's start sculpting with the back. The back is a rather complicated part with many muscles. It is helpful to think of the muscles as simple geometric shapes and imagine how they are located on the bones. For example, the hooded muscle is trapezoidal and in the reference images you can see which parts of the body it is connected to. You can quickly and accurately sculpt the muscles with the clay tool. I take the fell off a little lower so that it is more separated from the base form and it's visible. I create the muscles from more angular, harder shapes and at the end I will soften them where necessary. There will be sharper, harder and softer parts. The parts where the bone protrudes, such as the elbow, will have a sharper and harder shape and the parts where fat or muscle covers the bone will be softer. The chest will be like a bird's chest, only instead of feathers it will be covered with scales. The most important muscle here is the pectoral muscle, which will be connected under the shoulder. I am only sculpting the abdominal muscles as an indication so that they are slightly visible. There will be spikes along the spine that you can create with the move tool. Simply drop the shapes with it. Wings are basically just arms or front legs with long fingers with skin between them. So it's similar to sculpting an arm with shoulder muscles, biceps and forearm muscles. The fingers will be bonier as there are mainly tendons and skin. Ok, so I'm moving outward from the body, starting with the shoulder muscle, which ends at about a third of the upper arm, then the biceps and the triceps. Thank you. 
for the fingers it is enough to work out the joints. Now let's look at the legs. Before I do anything, I delete the grant so it doesn't bother me. The thigh muscles originate from the pelvis and attach to the knee. And the calf begins at the upper part of the leg and ends by tapering at the heel. Note that the calf is not made of one part but of two. His feet will be like those of a cassowary. Here too, the fingers are bonier and the fingers stick out, while the sole is softer. The nails can be made from separate objects or you can scalp them together. I suggest you do it separately as it will be easier to paint later. There are four or five muscles that run along the length of the tail, which are structured in a ring. I will first do the sculpting lengthwise and then crosswise. As for the back, I will make the spikes here as well. Several long muscles run along the neck, similar to the muscles of the tail. You don't have to deal with them much, what matters is the shape of the neck. It can be completely cylindrical or elongated or as flat as a cobra. I choose to create a shape in the form of a square with spiky scales. The head will be much bonier with spines covering the back of the skull, the upper part of the eye socket and the back of the jaw. I set the clay tool to invert and create the eye socket. The 
easiest way to make the nostrils is with the inverse tender tool. The eyelids are a bit tricky, many people make the mistake of depicting them as flat, even though they are covering an orb. A useful trick here is to place a sphere that will be the eyeball and adjust the eyelids to it. If that doesn't work, it can still help if you make two half spheres and insert them in the place of the eyelid, then adjust them a bit with the move tool. I create the iris with the inverted 3D stamp tool. You have different options for sculpting the mouth. For example, you can create its lips so it covers the teeth. This is what I am going to do here. But you can choose to have no lips, like the mouth of an alligator and show the teeth instead. It could also have sort of a beak, like the dragons in God of War. Now I am sculpting her lips and I am doing the gums separately. I create a new object and use the move tool to shape the palette and adjust it to the mouth and later clone it. I will sculpt a tooth and then clone it and modify it a bit with the move tool so that it is not the same as the previous one. When I have done half of the teeth, I join them and mirror them with clone and mirror. I will clone all of this and adjust it to the jaw and then make the tongue. For this, I make a sphere and create the shape with the move tool. I make the edge with the pinch tool and it's done. I've done the muscles and we've come to the end of this part. In the next parts, I will introduce alphas and the painting.